So I'm just going to stop it up here. Pause. Oh. Mm -hmm. doing, uh, we got everything. We just got to unmute myself. Unmute. And then, um, who do we have here? Paul Feinberg. Are you there? I think Lenny's going to be there. Is uh, it recording yet? I believe it is. Yes, it is. It's so. recording. I want to say a few things. All right, it's recorded. All right. What's but it? I want to say is if you two had not gone to that last yeah. meeting. We would have crashed and burned. I think yes. so, right? I think they Absolutely. uninvited us because no, they, they just... knew the reporter was going to be there. What's a reporter in the know. audience? I know. He wasn't there. It was he, was, he must have seen it. was just you and I. Yeah, it was just yeah, it was it after, the, after, the, um, after the permit applications were done, um, and it was just us, I think. So, I think um, it put them on notice a little bit, though, because only one voted against it, the same guy, Alan Lambert. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it, um, no, it went well, and uh, as well as we could expect. Yeah. So that's good. Okay, Hans is coming. He is coming. There he is. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> the closer the better. Yeah, the CEO. Yeah, yes, so I could call the meeting to order. Yeah. And I can see we have a roll call. Paul Feinberg is on uh, Zoom. And Charlie Bader. Oh, Chris, hi, Charlie. Chris hi, Bradley's hi. present. Tanya, myself, Kimberly Dallas, Jenna. Yeah. Hans is present, and Charlie Bader is on Zoom. He's uh, Charlie's in the waiting room. So is he waiting room? Oh, yeah. yeah I'm not I sure. don't see him. Uh, oh yeah, admit. Got it. Wait. Oh, there he is. There he is. Okay. Not okay. Uh, for old business, we have consideration of the November twenty sixth, two thousand twenty four minutes. Uh, thanks again, Paul, for doing the minutes. They're a great job. Uh, we I, we received your one change you make on the spelling of uh, Burks Lane Gets name. So uh, that's a good change to definitely want to have that one on the, you know the right spelling. Any other comments on the minutes or no? Great, great. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I'll move to accept them uh, as corrected. I'll uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. Uh, minutes are accepted. Okay, Chris, you want to start the... Well, it, the only thing I have is mm -hmm. to talk about the, um, the uh, uh, cutting within the 100-yard yeah. um, buffer. And... Um, we had some confusion and disagreement. I don't know what to call it uh, at the last meeting. So I thought we would uh, talk about it. And um, so um, I, it's complicated, I would say. Um, it's, it's so confusing that I feel like what I've done is understand it my way. And that's what I've presented to you because yeah. I've gone into it a hundred times since you wrote to me to try to tell you exactly what I think. And it's still the way I define it is like this. So first of all, D, I hate when the pages aren't the same. So it's O, O, one, two, D, I guess. O, two, D. Uh, pruning of tree branches on the bottom one third of the tree is permitted. That's very clear. That's the one thing that's clear and and that's what I've been telling people when I go see them, that if you want to create a view, there's a way to do it. One way is to cut the branches from the bottom of the tree so you can look at them. And that you're, that's legal. Now, the other piece of it requires reading through this very weeded uh, ordinance, which talks in great length about a stable of trees, which... It's very hard to decipher based on this table. So, but clearly you have to have a certain number of trees. And I can I can't even retain 
I can read it every time, decipher it, and kind of come up with something. And I can't even retain what I've come up with because it's so confusing. But clearly you need a stable of trees, which are defined by this table. But then it talks about under, what is it? Oh, two. And then there's these I, double I, triple I, four, five. And then it goes section 15, O to B, other natural vegetation. Does everybody see that? Yeah, right. It is defined as retaining existing vegetation under, under three, three feet. feet. And Stop, because the rest of it doesn't even apply. So if they talk about that, what I try to tell my clients is you can grow things to three feet and you can trim those things and maintain three feet. So, but what you're ending up with is a real mixture of heights, which is what you're supposed to end yeah. up with. Of course, people aren't even following the tree piece. So I don't see why they're so worried about it. But it, it, it goes on in that first sentence to say that uh, another, uh, and retaining at least five saplings right. less than two inches in diameter at four and one half feet above ground level. Right. So each 25, but so which creates a third level and that's your goal is to actually have five levels well does it say in the ordinance five levels no that's the late part let's not, let's not talk <laughs> yeah. about the five okay. levels Pat, uh, you need to admit uh lenny lenny's ready joining there he comes okay it's um, even late when he's home so basically, this is requesting three levels. But, you know, I who do this, you know, on a regular basis, define it with my knowledge. I don't know who could define this, who could explain it, who doesn't, you know, we are learning about this together. And I think we're beginning to understand what a good buffer is. But people who don't, I think this is very vague and it would be... I know they're overwhelmed and they'd probably not want to do this, but I do think it needs to be written more clearly, stating what's there. This is chapter 1000 from the state, yeah. so uh, uh, I don't think we can uh, change it. Okay. Right, right yeah. Hans, so this is boilerplate from the state? I think it's more strict, but um, yeah, I think because of the way it was written, it's Originally. complicated that everybody says, well, we'll adopt it as it's written. Well, what? Well, just adopt it as it's written. Uh, right. Try to rewrite it, and make it more strict. Because, I mean, like that three foot thing is a, It says you're supposed to not cut anything less than three feet tall. Right. right. So once it's four feet tall, you can. Well, there is something that talks about the stable, and if you have a certain number, I don't know what that stable is, but if you have a certain number of trees, it does say you can cut within that. As long as you reach 24 points, you know, I don't know how you figure that out exactly. I'm sure somebody with math and tree knowledge can, but I don't have it does make it complicated. I don't have a math homeowner to so understand. I, yeah. I feel like whoever wrote this wrote this was retiring. So <laughs> let him believe him that it does. I kind of looked at the name Sherlane Zoning. Yes, that's the best. That, that kind of gives you. A graphic, yes, it does in pictures. And I look at that, I, but that's a 2008 like, publication, and right? it's a guideline, it's yeah. not a so it's not, it's, it follows, it's not what, what follows what the guidelines are. And I'm sure there's only like the three feet you can. Well, what if we, I mean, what a point, what if we propose two things proposing that we understand that this is what this what it is, we understand that we understand it to mean this. Yeah. And we write something that's a little clearer, and would they accept that? Well, we can be stricter. We don't need to be stricter. We can say, I think yeah. if we're stricter, they'll go crazy. We just can't be less strict. Less strict. Right. Um, I think it is. But, but this is, I don't think you can simplify this and maintain the strictness of it because. It's complicated. You, you, need, you know, you got to get in the point system. If you throw the point system out, I think the DEP is going to block it. I wouldn't, that. I wouldn't yeah. point. I wouldn't do that. I don't think it's clear right. at all. But I wouldn't do that. I would just try to clarify what this three feet thing is. Well, and, and what the four feet yeah. thing is. 
Yeah, you went over D, but look right above it on C. Right above it on C. Yes. Um, is that O two C? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Where's that? There's the... Okay. Existing vegetation under three feet in height and other ground cover, including leaf litter, duck, shall not be cut, covered, or removed except to provide a footpath. Right. So. I'm saying under three feet yeah. can't be removed. And work. then it goes D, says pruning of tree branches. So if you have a tree and you cut the top off of it to keep it at three feet, it's a tree. You're not pruning the bottom third, you prune the very top, top. 10% or whatever it is. Well, yeah, so the complicated so thing is if it's a shrub, wouldn't fall under that. But yes. it's a tree. Yeah. So it's you're saying that, that if it's a white pine, you can't top it. If it's a rhododendron, I, I mean, you know, some sort of a bush, then you could. Well, it says pruning of tree branches on the bottom third, third. of the tree is permitted. Right. But so but, you start cutting the top third, but that's not permitted. But if you go back to um to B, selective cutting of trees within the buffer strip is permitted, provided that a well-distributed stand of trees and other natural vegetation is maintained. So it says that you can cut. Yeah, that's so you could, and, and then it goes on to say that then you get into the 25 by 50 foot rectangular square you know, area, which doesn't overlap. And then you have to you have to have five saplings and you have to have the point system. I right. Think. And I think that's to prevent overcrowding. You can selectively cut. Right. So you're not overcrowding an area. Exactly. So you can cut if you have so many trees. I think like if we could define what a buffer looks like, we're not going to be able to do that. But that, I mean, to, this is to, people can never, you can never understand this. Well, our intention is that they don't really jump in there and cut every branch when it gets to be bigger than 30 feet. I mean, they could just let it go. Well, obviously, That's they're cutting intention. all the trees down. Everywhere I go, they've cut the trees completely down. Yeah, well, but, well I, I think the, um, so I think now I'm beginning to understand this. It's not simple. I, I don't think. I don't think it's going to be simple if we're going to be as strict as uh, chapter 1000. Um, so then we get into this, the complication is that if we do the no mow buffer, yeah, then people can't maintain their view. They need five no, saplings. They, well, no, you can. So yeah, it naturally trees come up, right? Everything comes up, right? So if you, I, the way I vision, envision this is I see people with no trees, no anything growing right. on them. So trees. So a come, lawn going down to the water, which is that's what we'd love to eliminate. draw back and have a buffer there. But something in my mind, it could be blueberry bushes or any sort of bushes or even trim white pines or hemlocks or something where the tops cut off. I don't care. Because you can't do the tops cut off, but what you can do. Why can't you do? Because that off? thing says no. No, if it comes, if it's, if it, go, if it goes to three feet, it's above three feet. It's yes. three and a half feet tall. It's a, it's a white pine. It's got a little, you know, apical merrisment stem I up know. there. It's a little thing up there. Just cut that off. I'm like actually that. cutting mine. <laughs> but that, that, that's well, allowable. Okay, so I I believe it can be interpreted that way. And as far as I'm concerned, a three foot buffer across the top is better than no buffer whatsoever. Well, I think it's ideal actually yeah. compared to a lawn. I well, mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's ideal. It's bet. It's not ideal, but it's way better than nothing. Ideal because if you have a variety of things growing, remember it's not only what you see; it's right. what's growing below know, yeah. and what roots really absorb the phosphorus. The phosphorus that's right. Good, right. So you really do want a diversity, but if we could just get people to do a mo look, no mo, let them interpret what grows and what they can cut. I don't think we're going to be able to say that. Well, Unless, let's turn to the to the guy who's going to uh, 
enforce what they interpret. Uh, well, the way I enforce it is if it's a tree, you do not cut the top third or top two thirds. So you cut the top off your pine tree is an issue. It goes directly against what this says. So, but that can just think about it. A tree takes a while to grow. And while it's growing to be six feet, you can start to trim the bottom and you start to get your view. You also don't have a tree growing everywhere. I naturally did one section of my buffer and I don't have a crowding of trees and I can, well, some people think I should cut them down. There are lots where the bottom third is clearly, it's forested. The bottom third is cut out. And you got a great view and it's Absolutely. shady. Absolutely. I guess what I'm thinking of is the we're, we're trying to, um, if we can, we're trying to turn somebody's lawn that's running right down the lake into a buffer strip. So if you have, um, like I have all sorts of volunteer pines and hemlocks growing up, and um, it's going to be, I'm going to be dead by the time I can cut the lower third and have a view. You know, those oh, things are... Go to the breaks. You won't be dead, but you'll be Win-win, right? <laughs> <It's a win. laughs> they do grow fast. So, uh, but I, I think that they don't grow that fast. And I mean, I've been waiting for some along my shoreline that are like 12, 15 feet long. And I mean, I can get, I can see the water, you know, down there, but I'm not getting any uh, sort of view. Uh, out of that. So well, I'm I'm waiting for those. It's going to be beyond my lifetime before I can actually get a view out of those trees. Or maybe, or you'll fine. be really old and you won't be able to cut it. I won't be able to enjoy somebody it. Somebody else to you'll do be able it for to you. see the lake. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, won't. I do <laughs> disagree with you, Hans. I think that, you know, a tree and or a bush or whatever it is, in some cases it could be either depending on what you want it to be, you know, so for example, people have rhododendrons that are grow up to be this tall as their house, or they're down here. Um, I and that's think a shrub. Yeah, there is a difference. Yeah, I, I know, but you can make a tree a shrub. But that's an interpretation. Of that's a, shrub. a tech, That's a terminology. No, it's they're categorized. And go to New Main Extension has a great chart of native species: trees, mm -hmm. shrubs, and others. So, so but. It, Again, if I uh, let's say you had a whole bunch of trees grow up all of a sudden in your buffer, right? You have a right, according to this, to weed them out and then to selectively the... cut them right. as long as you leave five saplings within a 50 foot thing, so, right? So, yeah, but you're not, are you seeing that? How, are you seeing people cutting selectively cutting? Uh, and and you're okay with it, or at one point, I thought you said no cutting. So if they have five trees and they have 100 feet, that's okay. And if they have 200 feet, they still have five trees? No, it's per 50 per foot 50 thing. Feet. Then they have to have 10 feet. feet. So um, let's ask, uh, what do you do as far as, I mean, do you run into people that are, are cutting saplings and, you know, like a... Yeah, run into people that are cutting them off at like two feet, like every year, their whole yard. And, and the condos... Uh, you know, what they call right across from your office. Go down to their waterfront, same thing. They cut them off. So I've told them they have to start letting a few of them grow up because the down on trees that are there are end of life. Oh, those little uh, dropping cottages and yeah. down condos. Yeah. And even in their driveway, they've got cross big cedar trees that they've cut the off. By the dam, after the dam. Oh. Yeah, they, they get ugly. I mean, it's an ugly thing. It's got to be stressful. Yeah, and they've got great root systems in there. Um, but it's the exact opposite of what the ordinance says. Yeah, it's, they're cutting them down and removing them. They yeah. have? Well, this, this, the ground cover is like grass, pretty much. And, and who, if you don't let your... that condo? All the members are the ones that go Probably. along with that? Yes, yeah, right, right next to the dam. Which, yeah, I know. which yeah. dam? Got to be in the Old Dam and Belgrade Lake. Belgrade. Oh, in Belgrade. Lake. Yeah. So it's, it's on the uh, north side of the dam? I'm so stupid. Yes. And that, is that still Belgrade? It is. It, it is. is. Yeah. So is this, I would, that's what I, my interpretation is, where's the line? The line is on the corner? Just kind of past there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah somebody was telling me, no, no, you're wrong. It's the dam. I'm like, I think so. But anyway, okay. Uh, so if they selectively took out or cut down 
you know, um, a few, but left five within a 50 foot thing, you'd be okay with that. Mm -hmm. that's, and that's, why don't they listen to you? Well, I just found it this past fall. So <laughs> they have time had, to react. They haven't had time they, yet. Yeah. So. They plan to, and I plan to follow up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. So, because most of those, those, uh, they're all, you know, kind of those rental cottages. Yeah. Right. And those they, are condo. They, 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 yeah. they were condo yeah. probably 35 years ago. Oh, really? There were days. Uh, and there's steps, steps, steps from the water. Yeah, they're they right. They pass the water. Yeah, yeah, there's literally yeah, right no room to have to get stuff in the back. So, is it a downhill swell? I'm ready to prevent the water from getting down. And the people in the back want to have a view the same yeah. as the people in the front. So well, too bad. they go out there. They should have the front ones. Right. Yeah, I, I see it every day. They should have bought the front ones instead of the back ones. So they have to they I want the lake to be nice. They've <laughs> got to give in a little. So excuse me. Yeah. Yes. What is the oh. problem that we're trying to address? It yeah, seems to me that that uh, the problem that I have heard from Brian Moore, the arborist, that the greatest problem we have is that people coming in and cutting excessively and get to get a view, and pe particularly people who buy a new property. And haven't we permitted, uh, we've got a change that we say we need to have a tree permit issued by Hans. And isn't this what would, uh, the main problem with tree cutting at this point, that people are excessively cutting trees? Obsessed by it. Excessively. Uh, and obsessed. And obsessed. And yeah. You really haven't addressed that. I mean, what I understand from how it works is that uh, Hans has got this process where the arborist comes out, takes some pictures, and asks permission from Hans to cut, and it's it's all in control. Is yeah. that is that correct? I mean. Do we really have a problem here is what I'm asking. I think the discussion, Paul, is about the interpretation of the three foot tall rule. What's allowed to be cut, you and know, it, after it gets three feet tall. And are we asking that because we're looking at the no mo issue? Or well, I, I'm, I, I was going to get there. Uh, um, I think that our problem is that um, when we get to the uh, vegetative buffer change in that we've proposed for the ordinance that we're going to um we're going to need to be comfortable with what the law is and how can that no more buffer um protect the lake but also maintain the view for the uh owners uh, of the property so both things and and i you know jana was saying that she was telling people that yeah, let it grow up and then cut stuff, you know, to keep your view. And um, so I wanted to understand the ordinance because I personally think that lots of roots and bushes and even trees with the top cuts off, cut off, I think that's all great compared to lawn for sure. And maybe even compared to giant trees down to the lake with just duff understory and no bushes. So, yeah, that, that is a problem. Yeah, I mean, so. That, uh, so even the natural world might, you know, might improve it if it had a bunch of uh, um, trees cut off at the top, maybe. But so, so I think it's our interpretation and defense of our change uh, that we're recommending uh, for a wooded, uh, for a vegetative buffer. That's really what we need to be able to explain to the um, planning board, I think, on how people are going to do this. And I'm not sure, I'm not quite there yet. I mean, we're going to tell them they have to have, yeah, you can't, you, you want to have a building permit for a deck. And so you've got to stop mowing a buffer uh, and you, when it, stuff grows up, you're not going to be able to, your, your view is going to change. You're not going to protect your changes. I mean, that's kind of what I'm interpreting. Be, if your view grows up, it can't be three feet high, more than three feet high, right? No. It can be. Yes, it can be three feet It has to, you have to let five. It has to be at least three feet. Yeah, you, you can't cut 
until it hits three feet. And then you have to have five saplings. Um, and it says that... Uh, um, it says something about diameter. Uh, and retaining, retaining at least five saplings less than two inches in diameter at four and a half feet above ground level for each 25 foot by 50 foot rectangular area. Chris? Um, who is that? Uh, that? It's Charlie. Uh, I have a, a point I just want to make while I'm thinking of it, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think, you know, in re one of the standards that you're creating is when you, um, and, and one of the opportunities to add a buffer is when you have a building permit and another, you know, means to ask for it. Um, it's, so it's more of a recovery situation. Uh, the other standards have to do with existing trees and good buffer that's already in place when you move in or or on or are on a property. Um, so um, I do like the idea of Hans reviewing if it's okay with Hans. You know, any kind of cutting, um, especially commercial cutting and um, removing a large amount of vegetation in the shoreland zone or having to do with building permits. I think we've talked about in the past, you know, before and after pictures, things like that, um, of veg existing vegetation. But um, so I think it's, I think you're talking about not two different things, but two related things. One is recovering a buffer. One is trying to maintain a decent buffer with, and, and then you can't really allow people to, to cut that upper third of the tree. You know, once it's an established tree on an existing buffer, you have to allow for that two thirds of the tree to remain, but you should not be cutting the the lower, you know, three feet that we've been talking about um, within that hundred foot zone. Other than as we talked about, to have a, a trail, um, so that on an existing buffer that's there. But if you're recovering a lawn and you're requiring people to reestablish a buffer, then I I think. You know, my interpretation is at least having that three feet of height uh, within that 10, 20, whatever feet of buffer that you require. Um, and that's fairly easy to make, you know, monitor, and it's fairly easy to describe to people. Um, so it's two so different it's, standards Charlie, for two different actions. So why can't, we write it, why can't we write it up that way, Charlie? Yeah. I, I think you might. I think that would be the way. That's that. If I was explaining it to the planning board, that's what I'd say. Yeah, let's yeah. write it up that way. So, that so good. we need to change the the um, what we've recommended and create another category called a recovery buffer. Let's something yeah. to that effect. Yeah. And yeah. it would um, and it would be acceptable in a recovery buffer to have a uh, a just a limit of you can't cut anything under three feet in the recovery buffer, but no sapling requirement or anything like that. So people could, I mean, I, I love this idea because then people could maintain their view and they could protect the lake. And I think it would be really effective. Because they could, that's saleable. It would be saleable. Yeah. And it would be, I think it would be really effective too. Uh, I think that's great to have the recovery standard in, because otherwise we're going to have a, big objection to the vegetated buffer that we're uh, offering. Yeah, right. writing the state standards is a, is a, it's a rabbit hole, you know, right now and would take a lot of time. Yeah. Will somebody challenge it that it's not more stringent? You know, I don't know. It is. Well, it's more string, stringent than chapter 1000 because, uh, you know, chapter 1000 allows a, um, a lawn, uh, a pre-existing lawn to continue to exist. And this would be when we have a trigger event, you need to, if you want to get your permit, you need to establish a recovery buffer that would be actually put in your deed. I think that would be, you know, so down the line, 10, 20 years later, somebody can say, well, wait a minute, they're cutting. Where is it? <laughs> yeah. It's called the beta recovery buffer. Don't call it that. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. What do you what do you think, Hans? To that does that sound? Well, we're in a black hole. Yeah, you don't have a problem with it, though. 
Oh, right now. No. Oh. Okay. I mean, there's. Well, Charlie's on the line. Um, I've got a situation I've been contemplating. I want to put it out to you. Okay. Because it's kind of the opposite of deforesting. It's a problem with putting in too much too close to the water. We have no regulations against it. So there's a house that's within eight feet of the shoreline, great pond. It's very rocky. Right. And they want to put 10 high bush blueberry bushes between the house and the lake on this rocky berm. And there are five gallon containers. And I live. Exactly. Yeah. But there's nothing to stop it from happening. Uh -huh. I talked to the Landscape architect, owners are insistent. And the landscape so architect gonna, doesn't say to them, it's not going to live? They're going to hand dig it in. Someone's going to hand dig it in, but it's nothing to stop it. They're going to destroy the embankment, compromise the soil. Yeah. The house is only eight feet away. The overhang is 12 inches. So, I mean, you're going to have water running off the roof. Going to have an the road the soil, And they're going to lose their shoreline and maybe the house falls into the lake. Who knows? Huh? It'll take longer than our lifetime, probably. Well, maybe not. Like a storm storm storm. like last winter. Yeah. Well, the, what we're going to have we'll the next day. Because right now there's no gutters on the house. Right. And it's all going to run right down onto this embankment. Yeah. And, and you so start to, um, to do, do that, you've got to dig the soil up and put in, you're actually going to put those five gallon. Ten of them. They're not. They're going to leave them right in the bucket. That's going to totally destroy well, the structure. No, they take them out of the bucket. They'll take them out of the bucket. But, but say you have to dig a bigger. Yeah, they won't. And they're going to dislodge these boulders. Are going to be. Yeah, like, they're going to change the structure the, of the soil. And all the little root systems that are there from the moss or whatever else is lingering. Yeah, yeah. all the that they had is going to be gone now. I mean, so, the little that they had. So Charlie, how do you address that? The thought that occurs is to have. Any digging within the uh, shoreland zone, that 100 foot, um, you have to review it or, or have some mechanism to review it um, because it, on paper, it may sound correct. I, I've i seen, you know, things get approved that uh, I would not have, similar to what you're describing, cutting back the bank or, or whatever that I didn't think was a good idea, but it was already approved by DEP. So, um so be it. Um, but oh. I think if you were trying to write the standard, it, some kind of review mechanism where before you disturb any soil within whatever that, you know, 25, 75 or 100 feet, um, you should see the erosion control plan. Um, and it, it ought to be done by a certified person. And, um, and you should have some kind of sign off on it, um, I think. Uh, that way, given your concerns on this one, you'd probably say no or give me a revised plan. I, I'd like to see just like your buffer, there's no digging, period. Right. You know, put sod on top if you want. but no Well, maybe that's not a bad way to approach it. Um, and it's simple. And we could put that in writing and it would, uh, you know, within that zone that you want to recover um and at a minimum um that might be the way to address that it's it's a valid concern i've seen things that you know cause me you know issues but um that that's a simple standard and i think you know you could argue for it um in public so no digging within X feet of the shore. There's got to be exceptions for, you know, things like, you know, there's because there's drainage lines that people put in. There's there's other things that are that you can get a permit for. Um, you know, and we've done some of that ourselves, you know, at Seven Lakes and want to be able to continue doing that. So I think but it, it should be part of a plan, um, certainly within that last whatever, 10, 25 feet. Um, that Hans has a chance to double check. Um, but that ought to, the standard ought to be no digging unless there's a, you know, a bona fide erosion control reason uh, that's been approved by DEP or 
something to that effect. That seemed reasonable. Hans, you want to have none or you want to have... Uh... Well, I don't want to stop somebody from making a flower bed. You know, you want to have some maintenance. Right. People want to get out and bust with their plants. Um, and and so we encourage people to plant as many plants as possible to get that, you know, um, you know, buffer established because, you know, you're often starting from scratch and, the, you know, if, if the if the water has been running over the land, um, it, there's not a lot of uh, nutrients there to, you know, establish anything. So that's what that's the tricky part is how do you establish it without throwing a lot of phosphorus into it? So, which, you know, we've talked about not having phosphorus fertilizers. So, um, but that could all be part of your, you know, vegetation plan that you approve. And, and, and you know, you could have a separate permit for vegetation, you know, establishment within that buffer. Um, I mean, we, uh, we use the container size as a uh, threshold, like anything yeah. larger than a one gallon container must have. Needs have a review and you but know. could you have five of them you know I, I i often would want two or three plants well yeah um because you know if you're trying to replace a tree storm damage obviously it's already disturbed that should be allowed but um you know this person just wanted to put blueberries to keep somebody from walking i mean it's crazy um, so what was there before? It's natural. Just it was rocks, <laughs> rocks and oh, rocks. Oh, stuff. because rocks. And there's some saplings growing out of the embankment, which right. are being cut back. I think they're trying to put something in to prevent the trees from doing up. what they naturally would do. So a high bush is only going to get so tall, right? And uh, offer blueberries or whatever. And it would wow. be good to let those saplings grow to at least three feet. Yeah if not six feet, but. Right. And then prune the bottom third. Right. <laughs> Charlie, isn't that regulations about non-point DEP erosion control? Well, there, S. there's a lot of, you know, DEP rules that are, you know, generally unenforced. But this would be applicable here. I mean, you can't, a private line owner can't do something to cause erosion, right? Correct. Well, but, this is but, you know, yes. if, it's, if it's minor, the DEP is going to say plant as many plants as you can. I think I think the key is doing it carefully and uh, managing. Response. Yeah, and it's that was the response from DEP is they encourage all plantings. They but, should just but encourage as do, we, as do we. I mean, you know, our whole buffer message is let the plants grow. You know, but in certain areas or it's going to take a while or people have preference for blueberries or what have you. So. Well, even if they did fewer low bush, that would be better. Or at least indigenous. So I'm pushing them towards sod. So. But no, as the idea of sod with, um, you know, um, blueberries planted into it, uh, I think is, is not a bad approach. Um, well, and better well, than and better than nothing in most cases. Yeah, the the architects going back to the owners and see if they'll buy into the blueberry side. But well, you, know. you may say it's a requirement. You know, that's where having it in writing would be good, <laughs> or in ordinance. Yeah, yeah right now there's nothing enforceable. I, I mean, think. it's easy to plant blueberry side, and uh, that's a great solution, and and well, it would actually probably work better than their solution. You right. Know, yeah, it would be and more likely to live five, ten years. And if you tell them everything's going to die in a couple of years, it's going to be nothing. I mean, high bush blueberry. Right they're, they're so difficult to yeah. grow. I mean, I've I got mine by my stone wall at about you know 120 feet from the water, and those guys are pathetic. I've been nurturing them and loving them and they suck i think there's a real science to it because i had an abundant blueberry top and Absolutely. then i trimmed it yeah. enormously because i couldn't reach it anymore and it's just starting to come back now but i'm not sure what i'm doing right or wrong mm. yeah you need a lot of sun yeah yeah they, they have a lot but anyway um so what so if we add some language into section S, which is a yeah. version in the sedimentation control, would that work something that would work for you, Mars? 
Which one's that? Section S. S fifteen fifteen S. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Actually, we've got something back in uh, S thirteen. And I actually worked to get this changed from what it is because it limits somebody from moving one cubic yard of soil on their property anywhere in Shoal Lane Zone. And a lot of people do that. I mean, you bring mulch in, you're bringing in more than a yard, and we don't want to stop that. Um, so we're actually rewording this one to basically, if it's a contract and somebody you're hiring, they have to be certified. Um, so wouldn't this help protect the situation you're in now? When, yeah, would you move it up to 10 cubic yards now? Are you talking about that? I think if we put in like a the threshold of a gallon container within 25 feet of the water type deal, you know, make it a very narrow focus of restriction, not a broad focus, because this covers all the way back to 250 feet. Somebody was move a cubic yard on your property, you're supposed to have a certified DEP certified person doing it. And not everybody's DEP certified. So so would you make a change to 13 or would you add one in? Or? Well I think 13 sort of addresses it, but it's too broad. Okay. Right? We need to yeah add one in. Add another one in. Probably with so, the limiting, you know, of 25 feet, one gallon and a review with a written plan type deal. Um, so, so that brings up the question, do we want to, what are, are we going to try to present this before February or at February or sometime before next year? And I mean, we're, we've got the, presentation to the planning board, do we want to add this one in, I guess? Yeah, I think you could approach it as amendments in February when they take up your other 10 items. Yeah. Just to so, to say we've got we got some amendments and- More right now. Right. What's that? I don't feel like we can do anything more right now. I think we've kind of been backwarded until February. No, not right now, but I'm, but, but we're we would do it this February. And, uh, okay, um, so what, uh, no, so I have no digging within X feet of shore, but it, it would be what how you wanted it to be limited to like a one gallon, no anything larger than a one gallon container planting. So no no planting or really no larger than one gallon. And is that at a within the shoreline zone or is that within 25 feet or 20, 50 feet? I would say 25, 25 feet. Well, it sort of does bring up our, you know, we have our buffer at 10, but um, now that we're not going anywhere with it, um, I think we have it at 10, right? Uh, All right, make it 10 then, you know. No, I'd say make it 10, 25. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I mean, the 10 seems like the absolute minimum. I agree, but I'm so, trying not to push my thing here too hard. What change number is that? Let's change over 10. It says um, no more buffer along the shoreline between structures of the water body. Um, have a minimum width of 10 feet or 30% of the distance between any structures in the water body. So if you've got a, a, a if you got a hundred foot lawn, 10 feet is pretty wimpy. Um, oh, it is, yeah. Do we want to yeah. start changing that in this? As, as I'm well? in favor of that because 30% or 30% makes up the difference for things that are 25 low. feet or 30%. 30%. Yeah. Whichever is smaller. Everybody right. Okay that with that? Is it that? Mm -hmm. Are you going back to 25 feet now? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that that sounds right. And we can debate it. We may end up back at 10 feet, but um, I'd like you to. Ask, <laughs> so, you don't ask, you don't get. Right. And, and so then we have 25 feet there and then this new 15S uh, number 14, let's say, uh, would be no planting of vegetative uh, greater than one gallon uh, container. Uh, no containers, but how many? I mean, how many with 20 one gallon containers? But yeah, but a five gallon, you know, one gallon at least would not be <coughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. Is yeah, what other parameters 
you want to stick in there. Um, so, so if we said, let's say we say five, that there's a limit of five oh, oh, within a certain amount of time, a certain period of difference. Uh, can the can the planning board give an exception to that? And they say, if somebody comes in and says, I, I want 10 uh, one gallon things. Well, I think the way we should present this is that it requires a review of the uh, permit from the code officer or the planning board if it's a non conformity law. Why can't you say that it's one, you know, one gallon except as allowed by the CEO? So you it's, it's, it's up to you, to you to decide whether you, then you review it and decide whether you can allow uh, five would 50 feet for every 50 feet would be as much as you want. Whatever. What are other people like? What do you think? Yeah, I don't think the planning board needs to be involved with this no, right. type of thing. Well, yeah, I'm just sort of trying to get the so so if somebody had a plan that made sense and they wanted to have more than what's in the ordinance, could could that happen? Would that um is that at your discretion as a planning board or is that just a I just wonder you know, for you know just to see if we put something in here, are they just stuck with it and, or is it flexible at all? I think if, um, if you say it requires review from the code officer, then it's flexible. Okay. Yeah. Because it's yeah, yeah, you can if yeah. site's going to be different. Yeah. It's so do you need a permit it. to plant three blueberry bushes? No. Or yes. I mean, and if it's if you're within ten feet, I mean, I mean, like this one really. When I saw this architect plan of what they were going to do is, is ridiculous what they're cramming in yeah. on the shoreline. And I'm not sure the architect has ever even seen the shoreline. He says he has, but yeah. the rocks there are prohibited. So, but he's not a landscape architect. He's an architect. So he's doing some... No, he said landscape. Landscape, architect. landscape architect. Well, then he's going to want a retaining wall or a uh, riprap or uh, something. Right? That's what I see is, all right, let's destroy this and then create a situation where we reclaim make a nice retaining wall with some nice steps and oh. they've already got steps and they want to replace them. And I'm oh my God. That. No lamp post. They ought to have a lamp post to, you know, for <laughs> so like this is yeah. very light. So, Great <laughs> so, um, where are we this, with this? So are we saying this is going to be change number 11? Um, it's 14 is what I, well, Are we agree on um, the 25 feet or not? Um, I like the 25 feet. Um, so I think we're doing the 25 feet, but but I'm not sure. Um, I mean, that uh change you've got with your buffer, are you trying to put that into this section S, or where do you think that one's going to fit? Uh, change number 10. Change number 10. Instead, that was section 15 or oh. subsection title seven. So 1507. But you know, it may have it may have need to be in P as well. I don't know. But. So the seven is something you're creating. Yes. Yeah, and revegetation. <laughs> so section R, revegetation, is in response to violations. First sentence of that. Oh, wait, you're talking about, oh, I'm sorry. Section R? No, I um, yeah, get that. Oh, so it's O, and there's um, three, four, five, and then we had, we must have had a six in here. Um, Action. Um, yeah. So O was actually about clearing. Yeah. I think that's more appropriate to fit into S, which is your this, this thing about the first. Well, your your change number ten. Oh. 
Change number 10 to Buffalo. No more Buffalo. Belong square. It would S under erosion and sediment control. I'm, I'm happy with it. Either I have in both places when I recommended it initially. So, yeah. What was that again? It should go into section S. Section F. S. 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 Under erosion. Yeah. And sediment control. Yeah. So take it out of O. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you can incorporate this one gallon container maybe into your buffer. That is number 14 under S14. Add a 14. Yeah. So. Yep. But that's th this um the no more buffer would be would have to be an addition, I guess. I'd have to study this to see. But um so that might be 14 and then the the no digging might be uh 15, let's say. No, oh, we'll have to look at that. I think that's right, Chris. Yeah, that does look right. So this could be S15, S14, excuse me, S14 would be the change number 10, but the no move buffer S14. Yeah. Um, so this would be a new thing. And then um, did we want to have a limit of um, numbers of one gallon containers per That's 50 feet. 10 feet of shoreline or on sports ball. Putting on your lap, your IT hat. <laughs> do, we wanna, do we want to say a limit of, of one gallon containers per 10 feet of shoreline? Something like that. Say that again. A, um, a limit of one gallon containers per every 10 feet of shoreline. So Hans was saying, what are you yeah. going to do? Are you going to just cram in right. 45 into a... No, I think we need to say that. Maybe we should say C a CEO permit is required for planting, uh, more planting than what you just said. Maybe one every five feet. One, one gallon every five feet would be okay. Or five okay. every 50 feet or something like that. Yeah, whatever. Well, what what do you what's reasonable uh, as far as one gallon containers if somebody um i guess what we're sort of thinking about is what if we had you can do this if you do more than x number then you have to get permission from the ceo would is that would that make sense or is that that's uh, the tricky part is uh what triggers it so I'm just thinking if somebody wanted to put one blueberry bush next to their dock and they had a spot there and it, you know, wasn't a bad situation, would they need a permit to do that? That's kind of seems perhaps a difficult lift for us to get done. Yeah. yeah. And that's why this other provision I want to take it out is to, to not prevent somebody from you know, not make it a violation to do something right. good. But at the same time, if somebody's idea is, well, I'm going to put a blueberry bush right here. Oh, well, I'm digging, there's a rock in the way. I'm going to dig the rock out, put a blueberry bush in. Now you just create a soft spot for all the water to erode. The bush is going to die, wash into the lake. And now you've got, you've started a, a chain you've of events. You've created a problem. So... I, I would think anything, any planting greater than one gallon within, you know, 25 feet of the water requires a review. Okay, so... I think the question was, do we need further clarification about how many one-gallon containers yeah. within 25 feet of the water? Well, I think one, because okay. greater than you say, one. if you say five, well, someone's going to say, well, it doesn't say how much, what given time, so I'm going to do five today and five tomorrow, five the next day. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, pretty much a plan. Everybody's going to look at where you're going to be. Yeah, I never would have thought it out. Hmm. 
every site's different, you know, pretty much. Oh yeah. So what what if, if you you're looking at the density of where these one downs are, someplace you'd get a lot and you couldn't because of rocks and other ledges and That's stuff. That's true. So it's gonna be different in every almost every case. And that's why I think the CEO really you know, Yeah. And some people's that. idea of planting is they're not going to dig a hole. They're going to just put it on the ground and build a mound around it. Yeah. Really? Yep. I don't know anybody that would recommend doing planting anything like that. Well, when they're here for just a week. They might just do it that way. They're here for a week at a time and they don't want to spend the whole vacation digging the hole and rock oh. the soil. So. Okay. They bring the soil to us. That's a hard, hard to dig around here. Amazing. All right, so how does this go? So uh, planting of vegetative uh, greater vegetation greater than one gallon container, then one one gallon container requires CEO approval. Is that within 25 feet there? Within 25 feet, yeah. yes. And so if someone doesn't have the 25 feet, that would be non-conforming. It would have to go between, before you or before the planning board. Well, if it's within 25 feet. Yeah, you can do it within 25 feet. It just it may, it would not need a plan board. If it's 30 feet back, then you can do it. Have at it. Have at it. Not too far from the lake, really, in any event. How's this going to work with... Uh... The Conservation Corps coming in and doing all the summer work, Charlie. Um, is this is this a practical way to do this? Every well, I know that. Um, I, I think it, it requires coordination with the town. Hopefully, some of that's happening already. Um, I know that when whenever we do something, um, you know, um, Stewart gets in touch with DEP to, you know, there's actions that we do that don't require PBRs anymore, which are the permit by rules. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they basically grandfather, not, they don't grandfather us. They give us, um, you know, the ability because we're trained and we know what we're doing uh, to work uh, within the um, shoreland zone according to the DEP standards, so we don't have to file um, a lot of PBRs with the state anymore. Uh, it was a way of making it more efficient because they're overwhelmed. They don't have enough staff at the state. Um, so I think similarly, Hans might have a relationship with um, our YCC to, you know, basically green light projects that they're involved in. Um, but they would need to know the town standards if they were going to be different than the state standards. So if within that 25 feet, you know, there were different standards for the town, he'd have to be confident that they understood that and would um, carry that out, similar to what kind of what DEP allows us to do these days. Um, some things, any shore, um, shoreline riprap still requires a PBR. But they allow to they, for instance, allow us to put in steps and all other kinds of vegetation and um, you know activity again within the shoreland zone, other than um, riprap uh, without a PBR. That and any other landowner would re be required to have a PBR for the same activity. So that's a question of the relationship the, between the YCC and Hans and. Yeah, uh, that's, right now that would be that would be important for Hans because, you know, we do, I know we do 40 PBRs or used to around the, you know, watershed every year. Um, and, you know, we probably do, you know, 10 now because, you know, 10 riprap projects or something like that. So, um, you know, so our, our workload's down from, from actually having to submit a permit. Um, and, and Hans might require something similar or might, you know, defer to the DEP or, you know, how that works out in practice, I wouldn't want to say. But I think if the town standards are slightly different than the DEPs, it would be important to make them aware of it. Thank you. 
So as far as the Conservation Corps goes, putting in plantings and things, this is where the conversation started. We have no rules against putting plants in the ground, but we should have some rules against disturbance of soils within 25 feet. Or at least review by you at a minimum. You know, either you're saying you shouldn't happen. Um, but if we have the ordinance that says it can't, I can go tell somebody they can't do it, and they're going to say, why not? Prove it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Have something to back it up. So if it's a bad situation, like the one that I discovered, um, you know, all I can do is have a conversation and try to talk them down from what they're doing. You should definitely go in. Yeah. yeah. That's why we're giving you some authority. So, and, and you have no ability currently to say if you to basically use a trigger like a like a permit to require them to not do the blueberry bushes. I mean, you, the only reason I picked this up is because they're doing some. There, there was other construction, and they're doing a basically re revitalizing area, and I saw this on their plan. And it, it's a red flag for me, so we right. talked about it. Well, it makes sense under 13, but we're just making it clear. I don't think it needs a trigger. If we present no, I'm, I'm just saying, under the existing situation, he, he there's no trigger for him to stop them from putting the blueberry bush again. No, so, right. Other than if they start moving rocks, and, you know, disturbing well. the landscape, but they are killing vegetation theoretically. To make that hole, mm -hmm. but if we're going to go down that rabbit hole. Well, they're killing vegetation when they dig up their grass to put in a tree too. Mm -hmm. You know, so where's the line? Yeah. Well, they're not going to dig up their grass. They're going to just let everything grow. Remember, and they can now let it grow to be three feet. There's no digging anything. Up. No mow <laughs> means you let it grow. Yeah, no digging, no mowing, no nothing. What's that again, Janet? I, 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 a no phone. I, I get it. <laughs> I just wanted to hear you explain it one more time. That's all. No phone. <laughs> that looked good in the paper. <laughs> yeah, right. No phone. <laughs> no phone. <laughs> well, that's what the headlines right? Hans, I have a question for Hans. Are, hey, don't, some, don't some of your replanting plans, when somebody cuts down too many trees, require planting trees, you know, close to the shore? Yes. Or close to where the trees were removed, which could are often pretty close to the shore. So um, I think I, th I think your review of any kind of soil disturbance within that, you know, some some area, ten or twenty five feet, um, would allow you to do what you need to do. Is that, you know, I guess the, with the default being don't disturb. Um. When somebody's hand digging a hole, I mean, it's kind of hard to say it's regulated because our soils, you know, it, it regulates contractors and use of equipment, but nothing. Nothing says, by an order. Yeah. And, you know, you want to, everything in this ordinance encourages planting. Right. But that could go, planting can go too far. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Paul, you want? Did you want to talk about um, our next steps as along the lines of the conversation you and I had today? Did you want to? Sure. Next? Okay. I think that uh, we need to be careful and 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 how we move forward and with the planning board, that we need to do more work before we go before the planning board. I don't see any benefit of going to the planning board in February. And particularly, I was talking to Chris about the septic, that that's a, a, a heavy, huge lift to get the planning board in, in six weeks from now, whatever it is, to approve what we are offering is changes to the septic 
requiring inspections under certain circumstances. I think we need to do more work and more work in terms of in, in different areas from educating the public, maybe having some open hearings. I mean, like uh, we had a, a Pat a couple of years ago, we had a, a meeting at the uh, Center sure. for, all, for All Seasons. I think we need to educate the public with what we're talking about with the vegetated buffer and um, get more publicity. We need to, uh, as far as what we need to find out, we need more data on septic systems, which is working with the task force that uh, Bert Langette talked about with hiring an intern to get more data. We need to understand what other jurisdictions have done with respect to the septic regulations. I know that the town of China had a septic regulation that went before the electorate and failed. I don't know what it was exactly, but what it provided for. But I, I don't think we're ready at all to go before the, the planning board, particularly given how we get sandwiched in between their cases and that we don't have much time with them and they're not willing to give us a special meeting. I just think we need to concentrate on, you know, like PR, more work with the newspapers. We need to get the people on board with us. So when we do go to the planning board, it'll be a slam dunk. We will have our eggs in order. Right now, our eggs are ducks. I guess it's ducks, not eggs in order. <laughs> They don't want any inspection of septic systems at all unless people are going to add another bedroom or another bathroom. We haven't had that. We haven't, yet. We haven't. Yeah, that, that, I guess that would be my question. Um, would it would, or would it not make sense to kind of go through these with the planning board and see what their initial thoughts are to them? Let's get some feedback. Get some if we feedback. Could give us time to do that. You know, so it doesn't, if they, they barely are giving us time. Well, to February. We're, yeah. they, they're so not going to get until February. Have more of a discussion than a proposal. Well, yeah, I mean, we've got to. Well, we have to have something to go there with. No, I mean, we take this in for just, I agree with Paul. I think that we should work hard, and I love the idea of educating the public for support. I think we can do everything. And if we could do the, I would, listening to how, thinking about how so much of this could not go through, I'd rather see us be prepared and have it go through slowly. Let's say they do one in 12, and that goes to the public. Right. I mean, that's all that's, and that's going to go. All, that's all that's, that's, all, that's, going, that's so all that can happen, as long, as, assuming that they vote that George and, and um, um, Richard, was it Richard Pan? Who's the, 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 the Richard Baker? Richard Baker. Richard Baker. Richard Baker. Um, they're going to work on the language, assuming that that's a palatable and is voted right. four to one positive. Um, then that will go to through the process and to the voters in March. Um, nothing else will. So I agree that we should be addressing this a little bit differently. Well, and I think what you did today, Paul. Paul do, do you have Paul. anything specific in the uh, in the septic material that you think is problematic, or is it just in general? I just the whole idea of requiring inspections. I mean, when I go back and uh, I looked at the state, and when the oh. state made the requirement to for a buyer to have a certification before a sale could occur, the yeah. state. The state did a whole study. They were concerned about whether it was going to overburden the system of, of inspections. They did a whole due diligence before they passed it. And I can show you that report that they did. So I think we need to get more, more support, more be more thorough and be more due diligent before we go. And we need to point out that, well, they did it over here in New Hampshire. They did it, you know, this, but that we need to be more informed than we are at this point. I, okay. Yep. I think we need to have more re research, more data, more understanding about the legal authority to allow this to happen. But okay, you don't think we can can do that during the during the month of January, and we have two meetings. Well, I, my point is, yeah. unless I'm 
I'm totally ready to be corrected on this. My point is, it seems like we have a year that's been given to us that we didn't have before. I so see. Yes. We, okay. So why don't we point. use that time usefully? You know, sure. and and we got BLA and Lake Associations, Maine Maine uh, Lake Society. There's there's other resources. You know, um, Chris's idea to hire a, a municipal lawyer. <coughs> We've got to ask for us to get so that by the time we're ready to talk, everybody will know about this and it will and we'll be interested in it. That's my thought that the okay. beginning of the year, let's use it. Sure. Fair enough. And I, I think so too, uh, especially with septic systems. You know, it's a heavy lift. Right. How many are there? What ages are there? When were they last inspected? Yeah. Who's going to inspect all these? Let's say there's 1,500 septic cases that are coming up to get. How are we going to inspect them? There's not enough. Who's, there's not enough septic system inspectors. How are there? There's a lot of. It, what looks good to, to make as a, a recommendation, we have to be able to back up how it can be done. Right. Well, what, we could say on, on sale of any property, they need to have inspect well, there. Just to septic system enlighten you know, a little bit. Last night there was a dams committee meeting. Oh, yeah. The chair of the dams committee is Craig Alexander, and he brought up that now it is written that when property is sold, the buyer must have an inspection and the transfer. You know, we've been talking to the planning board, and he yeah. he told this committee that he's pushing for. The verb is to be said transfer. So anytime a property transfer is deeded down, wow. you do a estate planning, you add a child to it. So or, Craig said that. It's not that he did. You must think that's a popular well, it's platform. a catch-all. And it's popular platform. It's a he's political. This is at a dance committee meeting. The dance committee meeting, he, he brought it up. Yep. Was it sept concerning septic or something? Um, somebody brought up a question and it was yep. it was all, you know, it wasn't Dan committee focused, but <laughs> that's what he offered up to the crowd. Well, that's great. He's so, been rubbing off on him. Just don't push him. Don't poke him. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, Apparently we have the lighting light outside yeah. at the time. And it, it's just, wow. Heaven's parted yeah. and uh, but yeah. um going to Paul's yeah. point and what you today, what you did with the buffer, taking it, reviewing it, moving it from section O to section S is what you need yeah. to do. It's focus on each. For each change case. suggestion and uh, figure out where it really applies, what's already there, and how to integrate it. Right. And what do we need? What other information do we need, if possible? I mean, the, the only issue with coming up with research is that if if we don't have if we have a hostile environment that we're presenting it to, then I'm not sure that that's going to be effective. Um, I, I think we just need. I, I, I part of it, this is I think we need to get feedback from the planning board to see where they are with these. That, that's awesome. If we can yeah, that would get be, that's great. Yeah, you know, that, that was one change. So I also yeah. think though that having the press there helps. I think having organizations help. I think the reason that they voted the way they did was because they weren't doing it in the shadows. I really do think that made the difference. And we should think about it. And I don't think they need to be at every meeting this year. We should work on our stuff. But when it comes time to present this again, I think we need to expose it. That I get, I've got, I can't tell you how many people have sent me that article. Right. Five people besides you. you sent me that article. You know? Yeah. So it's important that the press gets it accurate too. Yes, yeah, I know. The 12 I ordinances for they weren't they, they weren't. won't. That's the press. <laughs> there were suggestions for change. They weren't ordinances. Yeah. Right. So uh, the headline yeah. was very you no, know, and, and that we're you can't mow your lawn anymore. And I mean just the yeah, yeah and that's just, what we've been getting phone calls is people are like, What is this? And like, no, it's oh, you're happy. The guy, you're the guy that wrote the article. Yeah. But there's just, nothing we can do about what they write. Except for make sure he gets it, you know, well, we, give him the right we information. Can get him more involved, you know, and explain to him. He's come to our meetings. We can explain where he, you know, how, we, we how, what he says. Over yeah. time, this will gather momentum. That's my point. Yeah. 
Yeah, and he actually called the town office and asked if they could mow. Sure. Uh, certain citizens. I was a member of the committee that was did call yesterday, and he I gave him a copy of the 12 recommendations before he left so he could see them himself. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, I do think that people are going to get confused. Like, what well, is it? It's, it's, it's a hot topic. But, well, you're planting seeds, too. Yeah, I mean, it's that's... A, it's a good... It's like a good time. He planted topic. a seed. He thought yeah, about it. He's thinking, yeah, that's a great idea, so... Yeah, one of the so don't expect the immediate reactions. Yeah. Try. But no, no, I mean, it's a long process. I think process. we could go for the septic, too. I think we should just say to the planning board, if anything gets um, turned over, it, it calls for a septic inspection. Well, and that's what... Not every septic system... Well, and that's what we have. Okay, that's that's yeah. fine. That's what think. we have now. Maybe yeah. fine with that. that, that yeah, well, well, let's hope so. Yeah. Um, I mean, that doesn't go into inspecting every old 30 year old exactly. system, but it just gets capture the ones when start. Start. every Indeed property change. is going to change. Yeah. Hopefully. And, and we don't know if legally we can force an inspection of the existing property that, uh, you know, that's a, maybe it's an old, all right, doesn't have any documentation. Maybe it's an old system. We don't know the, that the town of Belgrade has the legal authority to do that. No, but when people call, I did send letters out, and I got a lot of phone calls immediately of people pushing back. What letters but, are you referring what, to? What kind of letters? For septic inspections. Just suggesting? Just or, when, when, there's a, when a sale, you mean upon a sale? Yeah. Is, is that's what you're saying you now? A deed transfer. Oh, so, so you sent a letter saying, oh, I by the way. I did this back in May. And they were afraid, though. And well, the response was, you know, some one guy hired a lawyer and said, oh, well, we're not required, this, that, and the other thing. I said, you're not, but it's to be in compliance with the state mandate, you know, because the state put some rules for it. And, uh, and by saying just to be in compliance, I mean, if you don't want to be in compliance, that's fine. I mean, this conversation's over when we hang up the phone. And by saying that, they don't want to be in compliance. They don't want to voluntarily not be compliant. Yeah. So, so, so I've got what, does being in, what does that mean? I guess I don't understand. Is that a legal term? What does well, it mean to be in compliance or out of compliance? Well, either you comply or you don't. I mean, it's... I think people want to be in compliance. To the state regulation. It's a state regulated, you know, a, a, a deed transfer thing. So do, would that invalidate the deed transfer if, if it were not in compliance? No. No. No, but it's just being compliant with this, the municipality's ordinance. Well, what are the sanctions? Are there any fines or anything if you if you don't comply? No. Nope. So the state, state says that you sell your property and then the, in, there has to be an inspection within a period of time, right? That's the state. That's a state law, right? Yeah. Well, and what if you don't? If you don't do it, says the buyer must do it. The buyer must do it. If the buyer doesn't do it, there's no right. There's no just non there's no, no penalties written into the rule. So yeah. that, that's when there's a purchase. So right. the yeah. idea is a deed transfer that we change our ordinance to now it says purchase the buyer must. I think we should get go with that um when the I and it seems to be hot with with him we should Continue. Well, let's put them too much. The, the planning board just doesn't have time to do yeah, that. Yeah, they, they, they can't deal with that right but, now. Um, but next round. So, so there's no penalty to a buyer for not inspecting. Does that ever happen? Well, that's that, 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 that actually right. that part of part of the trans, the transaction. They say, okay, don't you have to do it in advance, or are you? I mean, if a buyer thought they could get a discount, they would certainly want to. Well, the real estate agent, what are you seeing? Well, that's that's mostly ninety five percent. I'd say, absolutely do it because they want to. They, they want to know in advance they before they close. When they can, closing, they could get money to do it's the right. set. It's so mostly rare, they all, very rare all... that it doesn't happen because it's a kind of a cudgel that the yeah. buyer can say, "Hey, the septic's bad. I got to take." Right. Then they go to you know, get a new price. system right. design yeah, exactly. and renegotiate the yeah. purchase price. But then, then you might have somebody that wires up and says that I'm not going to do it, and yeah, there's 
Yeah, but there's the buyer and the seller. They're not going to both state say requirement, that. requirement, but there's no penalty involved. Right. So yeah. Yeah, right, now it's, right now it's just a financial bargaining deal. It's, it's right. yeah. It's, that's how it self regulates. Yeah. So to. We'll so sell the volume is trying to guilt, guilt them into it, right? Is uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and I, it's, you know, if they're getting a mortgage, the bank doesn't want it you know, uninspected. They won't well, still be inspected. No, the buyer yes. doesn't want a shitty deal. Yeah, it's the buyer's driving. And the banks too, probably. Not really. Yeah. No. They're looking at title, they're looking the at banks don't care. Like kind of stuff. So is there a way of bringing any enforcement in a in a in yeah, a but it's not worth as much? Like a shoreline zoning ordinance or any ordinance? Um I mean we can oh, yeah, we have something do what we can, but um but you know if the state right. doesn't have a penalty. We could make a penalty though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because our rules could be stricter than the state. Well, I mean, our, can't be yeah. I mean, we could. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm just debating that we're talking well, about this. My question is: Is is it needed? It seems like it's it's worked out in the marketplace where a buyer insists that the seller comp you know, do something, and that's what Pat's telling you. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, well, is, there, it really, is it you really would think a so. You would think that that would be the case, but there may be some buyers. I mean, there there are two issues here. One is. I mean, the buyer has to be concerned that he's going to that that the system's going to just obviously fail, and and he'll have no choice. They will have no choice but to spend money. But there's also the question that if it's within the shoreline zone, that this that the system will fail in ways that we're concerned about, but that it uh, won't inconvenience the buyer. So we do want to have some sort of penalties or some way to regulate that. Well. And then there's no pressure yeah. if you if you're just passing a deed. Yeah. Well, the, the other it. the other thing is that currently it's the buyers driving the bus on getting the inspection done. But if we change the ordinance to require it upon a transfer of the property, so then you have um, somebody inheriting it or. Um, Putting it into an LLC. Yeah, yeah. Putting an LLC or something like that. There's no leverage from the transferee tree. Oh, right. So there's no, so you've lost the leverage and it's probably not going to be done if there's no um, penalty for it. Um, so, so Hans, if somebody um, didn't do it and lawyered up and said, no, I won't do it, and you tried to guilt them, they still refused. And then they came for a building permit. Um, you couldn't then There's say no well, penalty in the ordinance. There cannot be a penalty. Yeah. Uh, so, all that is, is, so that leverage you might have over them, you can't use really because no. no the no, ordinance, can you say the ordinance does not allow a penalty? No, it doesn't. It doesn't attach one to that. It doesn't have it. But I think it's on any and all of these inspection requirements that we're contemplating, we're going to have to come up with sanctions. We're going to have to come up with a, with a reason, you know. They would never get a building permit. No, you can't. Can't do that? Well, what, I mean, can't you say something like um, it's a hundred bucks a day or something like that? I mean, you, I mean, what, couldn't we break that into the ordinance? Well, I mean, um, yeah, there's the, the land, land use enforcement. Land use enforcement. It's uh, section 4452. Chapter, that's Title 38. Oh, shoreline zoning? No, that's a no. state. Ah. Land use name. Title 38. Oh, subsection 4452. What's it say? What's the name of that? It's Title 38. It's the land use mm -hmm. enforcement. Land use enforcement. Here's the heads up. We're five minutes to five. And I got a so so do we want to um come back to uh septic for the next meeting um, yeah yeah not rather than that plan um 
The next Did meeting is when? January. What was that? Back in When's the next January? meeting? Second Tuesday in January. Be in January. Yeah. This should be the 14th. 14th. Yeah. Okay. 14th. So, um, uh, oh, the, so uh, Hans, the um, so if somebody the, the, is it possible that we could write in the shoreland zoning ordinance that a uh, an inspection, if somebody is in violation of of having a, an inspection upon a transfer, that there would be a penalty? Could we put that in, like a hundred bucks a day or something? Like I, I'm just throwing that out or I mean is that legally possible? Oh well, I guess you'd have to I run that by your MMA not. attorney. Yeah. Fourteenth. Yeah, it's some sort it's title 30A. It's MRSA 30A. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. No, 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 no. Yeah, title 38. Well, anyways, it'll come up. You Google it, it'll come up. I and mean, I think we could rework every one of these potential changes or possible changes if we put much and develop more. Mm -hmm. Just temp this afternoon, just going into this, we find we missed a, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, no harm in no. working on it. And, uh, you know, it would be ideally we would want something uh, to present to the planning board before the February meeting that we're. Um, scheduled to be on the docket for them. So at least they have, so maybe we could rework this, give them what we have, and then keep working on it. Yeah, we said it's a process, right? Yeah, I, I would think that that would make sense to at least get some feedback from them um, yeah, and yeah. see where it goes. And I mean, we've done a lot of work on this and, and we need them to spend some time on it. And then they're very busy and we understand that. Um, but um, I think we can reasonably expect them to uh, to address these and give us some feedback for that. Just uh, one more thing before we wrap up. Yeah. Um, on Thursday, the 19th of December, the planning board's meeting, and we believe at that time they're going to be addressing what George Seal and Robert Baker, I believe, have talked about the verbiage for changes one and 12. Well, yeah. And I'm going to be in town that day, so I'm going to go to that meeting just in case any questions come up, as similar to how you two handled the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Is anyone else around that night to that's, attend? That's great. I'm out of town. But that, what, what's that, that time? It's a Thursday, December 19th. It's a week from this Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Oh, not, oh. not in town. I'll so, be there. I'll be North Carolina. Okay. I'm away. Uh, Pat's here, so Pat and I can go. Yep. I don't yep. I'm here. I'm leaving town. I'll be back in April. Okay. So that verbiage was sent to the attorney for a review. He okay. sent it back today with some revisions. And now it's going to go to DEP. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. Shoreland is all going to get great. So we think accepted. that we'll be back on the 19th for them to vote on? It should be. Oh, that's sure. great. And the meeting's at 6? Uh, yeah. 6 p.m. And that's great. That's good. Yeah. Is, it, is it new verbiage? They change it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're making it legal. I'm sure they do. <laughs> the attorney it changed it and probably sure, you know, he, he we, might we see, Can you send that around, Hans? No, I can't. No, no that's a planning board. Yeah. That's above your pay grade. Yeah. <laughs> You'll know in due course. No, well, it's not our control. I think it's, it's very helpful for... Uh, for people to be there, for uh, Pat and Kimberly to be there, yeah. just to just to you know make sure that yeah, they are, just the just are represented. Show the flag. Show the flag. Yeah, we should get t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, protest t-shirts. Right, sit in the back row. You know, be like in a con congressional hearing. All right. Okay. Hey, thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Right. Bye. Bye. Nice. Do Merry, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Thank you too. Coming up, isn't it? Yeah. yeah.
So I'm gonna zoom in and replace. I'm sorry, that's the most I could do. Well, let me get to zoom in. Is he coming here? Chris, are you hanging? 